Good morning, everyone. I wanted to uh, update you on about four items. And the first one is the QPF test. From what we can see, the QPF test is going pretty well overall. There are some occasional glitches. It seems like every day we have one or two offices where the, the grids, the super blend grids, which are run off a script automatically and sent directly through kind of a convoluted process to WPC are, are not received and they're, so they're missing a couple of offices. But it, in general, you know, 36 or 37 of our offices each day are, are getting to them so they're, they're able to see our grids. Uh, for the most part, I'm seeing the forecasts are seamless. Occasionally we run into issues with, with service backup. Uh, but in general, I think the results are pretty good and there's not a huge difference between, like we have seen in the past, between WPC and the NDFD, which naturally you would expect since about half of the solution is WPC, that you know, it would look a lot more similar, which is, which is good. Uh, most of the comments that we've gotten have pertained to two things, and they both involve the mountains. One is the mountain time zone, which is obviously very problematic in standard time and really to a certain extent in daylight time because it's right at shift change. Um, at 6Z is 11 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Uh, so somewhat, or maybe I have that backwards, but it's, it's, a, it's very problematic for them. And at, you know, at first blush, we don't have any immediate answers to how we can overcome that as far as collaborating with WPC. The obvious answer for the WFOs themselves is to give them an extra hour or so. Uh, and workload issues, again, I think these are things that just need to be docu documented and we'll try to see if we can figure out how to get uh, around them. Uh, but from, all, from the perspective of region, perspective of headquarters, they're very pleased with what they see, but again, I know that doesn't mean that it's all pleasing to the individual WFOs and the individual forecasters. Uh, so we get that and we encourage you to continue to document or have the forecasters document their challenges. Um, I will say that some of the responses that I see suggest that there's still a very huge spectrum of differences between how forecasters manually do things versus some of the automated techniques like automating most of your text products. I see people talking about having to run formatters and post edit and you know I some of that may be self-inflicted is what I'm I guess what I'm saying. But again, that's just my opinion, and it's not necessarily the opinion of the consistency team or the grid team. Uh, but I think I think there's probably ways that forecasters are spending too much time doing things. I heard people talking about changing their QPF a couple hundreds of an inch, and it's like, really? Uh, is that is that really necessary? Is that really going to change your you, what your high impact decision support messaging. So uh, just some of the initial thoughts there. Going to National Blender version 1.0, there was a glitch at NCO that was really outside of the scope of what we could test in the Blender team and through MDL that has delayed the 30-day test and it has to be restarted. So 
everything will be delayed probably two to four weeks. So the operational distribution of the national blend probably won't occur until sometime in January or February. What that means really for most of you is not much. If you're in the test the te four test offices, things will continue business as usual. Because it's being run in parallel, I don't think we're going to see any more dropouts like we saw in the past where they just wouldn't run it. So it should be available every run. If it's not, please let us know. The there are some issues with AWIP 16.1.1 such that it'll be available in D2D but not necessarily in uh, GFE, which, you know, don't, don't get me started on that. But um, we are working, we're going to work through the national and its config team to make sure that uh, when all offices have AWIPS 16.1.1 installed, uh, or shortly thereafter that we're able to display the data via the SBN in GFE. So I would say sometime around March would be when I think most offices should be able to see the blend. Uh, you're going to be able to see it. We have no immediate plans to use it because it's not every element. Um, our current goal is to, to start using the national blend instead of our regional blends for day four to seven sometime around October. And that depends on a lot of evaluation and other coordination. Uh, so it's just, just a plan. I, it's, I don't think it's anything to get totally worked up about. Um, it, it, there will be a process, but the blend will be in there. We're not going to, you know, prevent people from using it, but we're not planning on changing how we do super blend in days four to seven for almost a year from now. So just, just a heads up on that. Uh, the second tech note has been delayed due to a number of factors kind of outside of our control again, but uh, the second tech note will provide every WFO with the graphical digital aviation services tools like you'll be able to display using consensus short or gene lab or a whole host of other things. The, the gridded ceiling and visibility forecasts from uh, all the models that do that. Uh, there's also a low level wind shear tool that actually generates um, what, what you might use in a TAF, uh, the, the format for low-level wind shear grids based on uh, looking at shear low levels up through about 2,000 feet. Um, we're going to slow roll this out. So by, I think the tech note will be due in January. So it'll come out here sometime in November, but we will try to make it a very long, in excess of 30 day de deadline. So you'll have these grids, forecasters will be more than happy to look at them. We're not going to require anybody to do them, but we are, we are going to require these grids be loaded in so that we can verify them on voice verify using some of Jerry's uh, verification techniques. So if your office is already doing digital aviation services, you really don't have to change what you're doing. We're adding more tools using consensus short and other tools to, uh, to provide better gridded data sets to start with if you so choose. There also will be a formatter with GSD uh, the GSD has come up with a new TAF formatter for those who use TAF more formatters to take your grids and produce a work TAF that sends from GFE over to Aviation FPS. Um, 
Marcia Kranz and uh, Jamie from from Chicago, Jerry, Denny Van Cleve from MKX have been working on a training plan using some of the techniques from from Eastern Region from Boston uh, and now this new GSD formatter which is supposed to come up with a cleaner uh, TAF to produce these if you so choose. We also so we expect kind of a nine nine month, maybe nine to twelve month ease into this. We're not going to require that people use this. I think some of your forecasters will want to use it. We want to encourage that if they want to use the TAF formatter to send over a work TAF to Aviation FPS. They're certainly willing to they're certainly willing to have give you training to do that. But we found that the successful method of getting to where you do gridded TAF so that there's complete consistency between your short-term forecast and your TAF is to take six to 12 months to kind of reduce the panic that some forecasters have over doing the, you know, the, the workload issues or perceived workload issues. What ends up happening in, in what happened in Milwaukee and it happened in aerial offices, it scares the crap out of them at first and they, they complain there's too much work and they can't do it. And then later when they realize that there's there are advantages to doing this, they eventually never want to go back. So again, we, we don't want to force this out too fast. This has been collaborated through the Central Region Consistency Team and and so it has union buy-in, uh, but not to require that people actually use these grids to create their tasks, at least initially. Hey, hey Jeff, this is Mike. Yes. Hi there. Just, just a, just a quick question to confirm. So, if we're, you know, we've been doing the DES for a while. So this, this, um, you know, the the tech node and everything. I mean, we we don't have to change our process here or anything I mean you know we don't we're not gonna have to start with a initial are, are we gonna have to start with an initial you know data you know, you know model data set or can we still go and do some more because we've been doing some experimenting with some more some local uh, type grids ourselves well I I really I really don't know how to answer that question because we're going to set out a tech node that everyone's going to install. So it, I think my, well, for the I offices have that have been doing this for a while, my recommendation is that you talk to Jerry. So I would think Jackson, Kentucky might be in the same boat. Uh, you talk we to have Jerry. Been, Right. I mean, we've been in contact with Jerry, I mean, a fair amount, this whole thing. I mean, it, really, it, it just comes down to, I mean, so, I mean, when the, the grids, I, I guess the, the grids that, you know, you, the, the grids that we send out, um, I mean, are those going to have to be the, 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 the grids from, right from the, the blend or from, you know, the cons? Well, here, here's, here's my take on this. And again, I, since I don't have Jerry on the call, um, you know, I, it's hard for me to answer your specific technical question. But this is the general guideline that I would that I would uh, want you all to to adhere to. If you're not doing aviation grids, the package allows for them to be installed so that forecasters can look at them in GFE. We automatically load these grids which don't have to be used for the TAFs or anything else and then we have a way to verify them against actual ASOS and AWOS so we can get a sense for how the consensus short knit works all over the region not just at Milwaukee. Okay. So we'll be able to see in the mountains and other areas how, how this actually does compared to observations from AWOS ASOS sites. So we want that to happen. 
even if your office doesn't plan on doing much with it in the actual TAF forecast process for months. The, for the other group that's already doing it, we don't necessarily want to completely blow up what you're doing now and there may we may have to be creative but I don't believe that our tool set will be significantly different than from what you're doing other than you if you have local models in there the the issue then is should they be in there I, I don't know I don't I don't know that I don't know that we've actually gone that far to figure out whether we want to police that or not but eventually we want the same tool sets so that when you like you load super blend you wouldn't expect to see seams between say right. a consensus short uh, ceiling and visibility field if you know what I mean so does right. that answer your question uh, it does I guess I guess um, it does it answers that I, I guess the big thing is, is that you know I I guess I wasn't totally understanding if, if we were Actually, these were the grids that we were going to be sending out. I mean, because you know, we we end up having to do some post editing and some using some tools and whatnot, even even using the the various blends. To especially well, we're not going to we're not going to overwrite at your office with consensus short the grids that go out. Oh, okay. But we will be able to. But I'm sure Jerry will be able to. The, the reason he needs to do that is we need an official grid for the offices that don't do it in order to run the verification. But if you're already yeah, doing it, then there'll be a consensus short that gets verified, but official will be official. So I don't think you have to worry about that. Okay. Okay. Well, and if you do, if you do, then we'll have to try to find a workaround for offices like yourselves in Jackson, Kentucky, because um, we don't want to blow that away. No, but no. if you're not doing any aviation grids right now, we just want to be able to verify them just to see if there's any major issues we need to address. Gotcha. Okay, that, that answers my question. Thanks, Jeff. Anything else before I move on to the last topic? So careful, you know, this is one of those exercises and careful what you ask for. So pick, picking on Minneapolis, but not really picking on them. Um, we get, a, you know, we get occasional fire drills caused by headquarters getting worked up about things. So there was an incident where a tweet went out um, that talked about road weather and it got the private sector all stirred up and whatnot. But anyways, long story short, there was a knee-jerk reaction to, to make sure we were aware of every project that's going on in Central Region. Well, years ago, particularly about two years ago, there was a pretty good call for projects on and we have a database of 360 projects and project number 296 was from Minneapolis submitted by Tom Hallquist which talks about their winter weather initiative dealing with road conditions which is fine um, but here's the problem now we have really no clue how we're going to scrub this um, my idea is to have John Ice lead a team of a couple of SUs and a couple of WCMs from Central Region to look over and kind of scrub this list, throw out stuff that's no longer occurring, um, have this project repository that's updated on VLAB uh, that uh, that is up to date. There's several projects are similar. We want to try to consolidate those and then see which ones we can expand to the whole region, which ones maybe we need to discontinue uh, because it, they're competing with other similar projects, uh, things like that. Um, but it's going to take some time and I 
don't think that one or two of us at region should be the arbiters of what prioritized and what isn't. I think that um, some field folks should have their hand in there to help us prioritize things and try to consolidate projects that are similar. So that's going to take a lot of time. So I, that's going to take months and months. So I don't expect to solve that overnight, but we would appreciate you updating on the repository current projects that you think, um, you know, first of all, we just want to know if they're local, but if they're things that we think should be expanded regionally, that's the, the problem with managing projects and innovation is we need to make decisions and then go out corporately with something that maybe not everybody buys into 100% because it doesn't have every little color and gadget that you have, but it, 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 we need more corporate solutions regionally and nationally, and that's what they really want us to do is we get five different ways to do blowing snow or five different ways to do road conditions, and it's really not manageable. So uh, we appreciate your patience with that. And I run way over time, pass the baton to John Ice, unless there's any last questions. <clears throat> okay, John, take it away. Okay. Um, oh, uh, Pat Spoden, did you have a quick question? I'll unmute you. Yeah, Jeff, you mentioned that uh, the tech note is delayed. Do you have any idea when it might be released? Or did you already say it and I missed it? Well, we were, we're depending on another update, I believe, from the, from the NIC, which is National Weather Service, the NIC config for all the smart NICs. And I believe that might be released as late as the day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> so what we might do is even though we release this next week or maybe the week after Thanksgiving, it still won't have a deadline till sometime in January because we know about all the leave and the, the moratoriums and giving 30 days. And so we, 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 we want it available for those that have the time to install it as soon as possible, but we know that that's not likely in every office. So the short answer is probably next week or the week after Thanksgiving. Okay. And we have one more question from uh, Dan. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, Jeff, hey, it's Dan in La Crosse. I have a question on the QPF test. Moving forward here, do we, um, well, first, thanks for those early ver verification um, data that you sent along. I noticed that the EC was pretty close to number one, especially when you get into those higher QPF events. Uh, the GFS skill really falls off like for over an inch. So my question is regarding the ECMWF, um, do you know if WPC including the ECMWF in their QPF blend? Um, I know that Dave Novak well, said here, for the winter weather that they, they thought for that experiment they could include it. But I'm just curious going forward if we're going to be dealing with a, a blend of ours that's not going to include the EC and then they will include an EC. Can you give me some info moving forward on that? Well, that's a very interesting question. W, WPC's QPF is hand-drawn on a 20-kilometer grid and then downscaled to 5 kilometers. So they don't use a blend to start, nor are they committed to using the blend as a starting point. Uh, but If you hand draw it, you probably could include the European influence. So I think there's there's some politics that they're trying to figure out how we can use the European without using the European. Therefore, 
there's a strong push not to force WPC to use the National Blend of Models QPF as the starting point, which is counter to what we're all trying to push. However, you can see why they may not choose to do that. So I, I think that's I think it's a very difficult political question and I'm sure they want to do all they can to find ways around throwing out one of the better models. And on the surface, this may cause some people to freak out and say, I don't want to accept a hand-drawn QPF from WPC as a starting point down the line when I have a national blend. But there may be advantages to that. And messaging this is probably going to be the hardest part without alarming the Europeans and without alarming forecasters in complex terrain that that want I mean so th this is a very difficult question that that is being thought about but I don't know how openly it can be discussed on paper if you know what I mean I hope that answers your question well I don't know I don't know if they're I, I guess it does somewhat well, I mean <laughs> but I know it's difficult I know. Legally, okay we can't legally use the European yeah. QPF going forward in a blend that's distributed as a grid in a yeah, forecast. I, I get all that, Jeff. I, I get Yeah, that. I mean, so... My, my, my biggest thing is when I, I share... Know, so the answer... Yes, I, I, I would just like to say something here. When I share the verification results, you know, and show, they clearly show the EC skill in there, the question follows right away of, what happens when the EC comes out of our blend and discrepancies, you know, between WPC and I understand our targets not to mimic them, but we're going to have maybe some more choices to make. I don't know. I'm just, I was just curious. So I, I guess you answered my question. I don't want to take too much time on this one topic. I just, so. The good news is in the extended, the European is a big part in the short term it's actually a fairly small part right. of super blend, but I'm not sure that's good news for our extended. But I hear you. <laughs> if it's going away, well, I mean, it's bad. The good news is is, is that the QPF is a short term and it's a small. The bad news in the extended. So I mean, I, I guess what I right, meant. Right, right, right. I didn't say what I meant. Yeah, sorry. We have one more comment uh, from Dan Neatfeld. Dan? Uh, yeah, I was just going to make a couple of quick comments. Um, when I left WPC, there there were no restrictions at that time on using the EC. And I know that that was a big controversy, but uh, where it stood um, was that they were still allowed to use it. So that's one point of clarification from what I understand. And then um, on the national blend the QPF, the the early results were that it's just really terrible. Um, you know, you wouldn't want that in any forecast. So, you know, they hope to someday improve it through various techniques, but um, the early look was that it was just complete garbage. So that's I think we're a ways away from from being able to pull in the national blend QPF and use that as our forecast. So when Dan, when you say use it, that you guys don't use a blend at WPC. You, I mean, you. From what I, from what I could tell, there is no blend. That's correct. And I guess what I was talking about was the the early looks of, you know, the, the, there was some some effort to try to make a QPF from the national blend, and. Um, Again, you know, talking to Dave Merrick and, and others, it was just uh, it was again really bad. So, so that exists, um, but I think that they feel like they're maybe you know a couple of years out from getting that honed to where it can be useful. Um, but otherwise, you're right in terms of you know they can hand draw based on. Uh, um, I mean, they they have various blends that they can they can blend output. 
and display that and then trace that or whatever they want to do with that. Um, and then again, they, they certainly can use the EC in that process. So if they want to use the EC straight up, um, they, they could do that. But for the most part, um, yeah, it's still it's still manually done and it's it's basically hand drawn using whatever output they, they see fit. All right, thanks, John. Thanks for letting me jump ahead of you. And uh, yeah, we do have some visitors here in the building this week. So um, once I'm done, I'm going to be jumping off the call. So if you don't get your, if you have questions that you don't get to me today before I drop off, of course, you know, feel free to email them to me. Uh, two things I wanted to bring up. Uh, AWIPS OB1611 entered field beta. Uh, at a couple of eastern region sites and some pretty critical issues were uncovered. As a result of those issues, the, the 16.1.1 installs have been halted at this point until those issues can be resolved. So our beta sites, which were Goodland and Dodge, were supposed to be installing today and tomorrow, and they are not doing that until we get some word from Raytheon as to what the um, the root cause and solution for these issues were. And those issues, just in a nutshell, uh, the uh, the beta sites were encountering some cave crashes, uh, which there is some speculation emphasis on speculation that it might be related to the old LX workstations. Uh, we have not seen those crashes here on the new workstations and I believe there is also one field beta site that has the new workstations installed and they also have not reported any crashes. Uh, perhaps as critically uh, it was discovered that FIPS-based products such as the CEM and WCN products could not be generated from GFE and that caused some significant issues uh, for uh, at least one eastern region and one southern region site. Uh, the cause and fix has already been identified for that uh, so those those sites are going to get patched uh, for those issues. And I believe there's also a, an issue with IFP image, uh, which needs to be corrected before we can start moving forward again. The other subject that, that I wanted to speak on uh, is the collaboration capability in AWIPS2. Uh, you probably saw the email that went out from Bill Gary that the December 1st Shutoff date for One Two Planet has been delayed uh, until after the start of the calendar year. It it's unclear as to exactly when that's going to occur. There are some negotiations that need to take place. We're also looking for some software updates from Raytheon to correct some of the issues that have been occurring. Um, sites can you know, continue to go ahead and sign in to the AWIP2 collaboration, work on your site configurations, do those sorts of activities, and then we're going to have, uh, it looks like Central Region may participate in some of the early uh, formal testing. I think we're going to try and have some offices formally use uh, collaboration for perhaps just a few hours out of one shift. We're going to try and get SPC in there also, uh, uh, but the, the dates for those things have not been set, and they they won't it won't be until after the holidays. Uh, so that's going to be coming up. Um, I think that's about all I had uh, for today, John. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, I, I have been working on getting some aviation grids included into the NCAR 3-kilometer ensemble. Uh, I, I need to check with Jerry. I think installing that might be part of this second tech order. 
that um, Jeff referred to earlier. I'll need to double check on that. But I've gotten some, some aviation grids that uh, NCAR was kind enough to start including in their output. So I've uh, been able to create ensemble mean, min, and uh, probabilities of select thresholds uh, for ceiling and visibility from the NCAR ensemble. So that, that might be useful to start taking a look at. And that's all I have. If, uh, if there are any questions, I'll answer those now. Hi, Matt. Uh, this is Aaron at Dodge. Um, I guess my question is, you know, we were kind of setting here uh, to, to go through the, the AWIPS uh, collaboration training on the, in the, from the NWSTC. Is it worth taking my staff through that now, or is this newer version that Bill's talking about on the email from Ashley going to change stuff enough that I, I shouldn't have them go through that? I guess that's kind of where I'm standing with this process with the collaboration tool. I would say go ahead and take the training. The software updates that are going to be coming out are mainly going to be fixing issues that have been found. There, there will not be significant changes to the functionality. So go ahead and go ahead and go through the training. Okay, very, very good. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. And um, I'll go ahead and go to our first. Um, uh, item was our new proposed publications process and um, I'd like to thank uh, Matt and the, his team for uh, basically coming up with this and I'll be pretty much taking care of the actual facilitating and uh, and the papers and so forth for uh, Central Region now and then the publications advisory team will operate as a board of editors and from there they'll be finding people with different subject matter uh, backgrounds would be good to review papers uh, within uh, the Sioux community. So um, be watching for some changes there. We're probably not going to roll this out altogether until uh, I need to get it set up on the virtual lab, uh, the whole process for the way we actually uh, submit the papers and uh, then we notify different people that uh, it's been done. And you can also then go in and see where where the progress is, where we're at on a given paper. And we will have different deadlines. Um, so we're going to try to uh, look at, you know, not having something sit for two months. Uh, not that it does now, but uh, since we're including more people in the review process, uh, that could potentially happen. So we'll be tracking all that. Matt, did you have anything you wanted to uh, comment on? As far as the abstracts, do you want to say anything about that for conferences? We'll be making a preliminary ranking of abstracts and then the team will actually uh, take a look at those too and we may we may pull some other folks in, some of you once in a while to look at it and be part of the review process also. Usually the only time we're going to have to do any type of rankings is just going to be for the large conferences. Uh, most of the time the rest are not going to be a problem so this will probably only come up maybe three or four times at the most in a, in a given year. Okay and then one other thing I had was um, I, know, I know we're still waiting on getting the uh, Central Region Tech attached attachments page back up and running. It was kind of a casualty of that April 1st or thereabouts transition over to the CMS. And so I was wondering if you know the status of that and, and a second part of that is I had emailed Jeff Craven and said, why can't we have a technical attachments page for all the regions and one, you know, one location instead of each region having their own? That way when uh, Eastern Region comes out with new ones or Western Region they're all in one place and we can just go there and see it. We don't have to have four or six different links to, you know, the different regions. That's a good point. And I will have to check and uh, see where the other ones are and see if we can come up with a way of putting them all in one place. But yes, it was definitely a casualty. <laughs> and unfortunately, Jeff's not here to see where we're at to let us know this morning. But I, I know he was working on that to see where where they are and to get them, I think he was starting to put them back together, but they just weren't online yet because uh, we were looking at okay. actually moving them uh, onto the virtual lab so uh, you could you could just get them from there and always know that they would be there. But I can I can check with the other regions. 
and see what they would okay. like to do. But we were just trying to go ahead and just get ourselves kind of set up first and, and let them know. And uh, All right. Yeah, Sounds good. Yeah, thanks. And uh, Dan, go ahead. You had some a uh, couple questions. Well, I, I, I think Matt asked my question was where all the online publications went, but VLAB won't work for that because we have the public that wants to access those publications. Um, and so we, we need it. We need to put those on the public side. Oh, good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah, very good. We will have to have an actual uh, page uh, online uh, for everybody to get to. So, um, just want to uh, touch on what um, you'll probably be seeing something uh, from me shortly, and I'll also send some to WCMs asking who would like to be involved in reviewing the projects. That's that's just that that. Uh, I had sent that out when we were doing the NOAA repository, project repository this past year. And um, I'm thinking also of having some of you just go through and do an initial scrub too. If you're not even you know, doing something at your office anymore or aren't really interested, um, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll put a couple a column in there where you can just go in quickly and just say yes or no. Uh, for keeping it uh, as an active uh, uh, project or potential project in the central region. Any questions about that? Okay, on the virtual lab, I want to thank everybody uh, um, for keeping up with the uh, QPF test. Um, we're doing really, actually, this is staying relatively active for just getting underway. Um, I just checked, uh, it turns out we have about 357 people signed up uh, for the uh, Central Region Sioux page. So if there's anybody else that would, in your office, I would encourage them to continue to sign up, but uh, appreciate those that have gotten on so far. Um, if you are looking for any of the emails that's coming to the test team and a lot of the responses that come with it, uh, the Central Region QPF test team uh, will uh, be uh, going ahead and uh, continuing to put these on the forum here. So there's a whole archive if you need to go back and uh, review them or search some information uh, from the test and from the past. But we do have some other ones too here, just general questions and answers and uh, for policy questions and so forth. So if you have any uh, uh, need any help with any of this, uh, just let uh, Jeff or myself uh, know. Uh, outside of that, um, we decided to go ahead and split up the uh, model valuations into their own separate pages. Uh, it seems like it's going to work uh, well. Um, Jeff just this morning posted some from uh, the GFS about the May 2016 upgrade, and uh, I would uh, you might want to take a take a gander at that and see what the, all the uh, some of the information is. Uh, that might be available to you. And here here down below at the Documents and Media is where he actually posted the uh, PowerPoint itself. So any questions on the virtual lab for the moment? Does this include projects we have already registered in VLAB? Uh, no, it, the, the file you'll be going through, if you've already put it on the, the virtual lab, um, uh, I'll, I'll put something there that you can, instead of yes, no, or you can say you've already, like a V for V lab, you already put it there. So uh, um, so they'll give you that option uh, to do that. Phil, does that sound okay? Yeah, that works. That helps me out a lot. Thanks. Okay, sure. Thanks, Phil, for that question. C-STAR. Um, we're just starting to review about mid-December, just to give you a sense. Uh, we're going to be meeting to review all the C-STAR proposals. Uh, thanks, everyone. That's uh, We had, I think, I believe, 10 out of the 24, which is great. Uh, appreciate everybody's work on that. And uh, we'll be going through them all uh, with the other regions and uh, deciding which ones uh, will get funded. If there's anything you want me to know about any of these that your office is involved with that uh, could give us a little extra push while we're uh, discussing these with the other regions, uh, feel free to send that uh, to both myself and you can uh, also uh, put Jeff Craven on that list too because we'll both be on that call uh, this time around. Then in the future, I'll probably just take care of it for the most part. Also, uh, just uh, something, um, a reminder as we go through uh, bringing in the digital aviation services, uh, 
make sure you keep in contact with your local aviation focal point. If, if they're hearing something different than you're hearing from us on that or vice versa, if there's any problems, uh, go ahead and uh, drop me a note or give me a call and I'll make sure that we're all on the same page here. I'm trying to, part of my work and my job is to uh, cross over with the AFS folks or the uh, services division here and make sure that we're all uh, synced up together in what we're doing. So, uh, and that applies also to hydrology. Um, it's the same thing. I work with Wendy Pearson on any issues that come up. So if you think anything in the water resources area, um, if you have a service, you're with your service hydrologist or if you have a focal point in that area, uh, please uh, just let me know and uh, we'll work out any anything that comes up. So that's all I've got. Uh, any questions for me? Okay, Greg, go ahead. All right, thanks, John. I guess I'll start with the, the good news on, on BMH. Um, last week, we voted and gave approval to start phase two of the beta testing, and that is the portion where um, the beta sites will actually make the whole switch over to BMH and allow at least one transmitter to be fully BMH fed while the you know some of the other transmitters are still on CRS and that will continue at least through I have a feeling it's going to push into early January I don't think they've officially pushed uh, the date back but I think there's been some issues that came up just like everything and so that's gonna the beta testing is probably going to continue to early January but um, anyway, we are going to have problems with um, because of the 1611 being delayed and stuff. Um, AWIPS had a, a 15 2.1 only BMH um, fix release. Well, that was merged with 1611, and now with the new updates for uh, um, that they're going to have to put in into 16.21. So a lot of those fixes are coming that they have identified during the beta sites. Um, overall, I think the beta sites are happy with BMH. Um, some of the issues are like the DAC audio levels were too low, or um, there was one where the um, NeoSpeech was having problems with if there was a period followed by a line feed, that was causing some problems. Um, but anyway, those have all been fixed. It's just getting them into the, to the next release. And, because of the uh, other delays with the main build 1611, that's going to push everything else down as expected. Um, I think that's all I have. Are there any questions about BMH, the broadcast message handler? Okay, John. Yeah, thanks, uh, Greg. Uh, we had one question. Is there BMH training? That was from Ed Ray. Uh, yes, I believe there's already on the LMS, there's already a um, one version that I think everybody has to take um, that's available. And I'm currently reviewing one of the more, of the, the more detailed uh, training from the training center. Um, I'm reviewing what they're doing right now, so I think a lot of that will be available um, before the end of the uh, ot &E. So I expect that probably in December, early January, additional training comes from the training center. But there's already at least one of them up there on, on um, the LMS for BMH. Okay. Any other questions for Greg? Okay, hearing none, um, just move on to water resources. Um, just a reminder about the flash flood uh, learning plan, and there's also free GIS training from Esri online. That's the only things that Chris and uh, Wendy uh, had to pass along. Um, just a quick note, uh, Chris, uh, I think his first day is um, January 11th down in uh, Fort Worth, so their RFC, so he'll be here 
uh, through the holidays and then he'll be uh, moving on. Okay, um, I don't believe we have anything from AFS today and so we're to the open forum and um, Jeff, I'll just unmute you so you can talk to. And uh, Greg, yeah. you're still on mute too. Just, just to um, just to clarify on Chris Plander, uh, I believe before it was official, you you got you probably already got an email uh, from Wendy Pearson. Uh, if you didn't, I apologize, and I'll go ahead and forward it. So did everyone see that note weeks ago that Chris Landers, the new doe in West Gulf RFC in Fort Worth? I guess they're all muted. Um, <laughs> you can well, put, uh, uh, if, yeah, I'm not getting any, any uh, let's see, it says, um, well, I'll go, I'll oh, yeah, go ahead yeah, they did, and... They, uh, did see it. they did see it. Uh, Pat Spoden said they did. They did. did see okay, it. good, good. And, uh, so and Scott Doomer has a question planning? for you, too. Okay. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, um, now that Central Region Headquarters is down two hydrologist positions, what's the plan to at least backfill one of them? Well, we're we're going to immediately backfill Chris Lander's slot um, because I have the means and STI to do it. The, the long-term plan in a couple, three years is to move that hydro slot over under water resources so that Wendy would have two hydrologists under her so that there'd be a total of three. But in the meantime, we can't reorg until after the OWA is complete. So Chris, Chris Drager was going to announce today on, on the MIC call all the positions he plans to fill. So what we'll do is we'll do the same thing we did with Chris Lander is we will fill it with a hydrologist immediately. And that person will technically report to me but would effectively report to Wendy in the same kind of role that Chris fills. So we definitely have that as a priority. As far as the AFS side, as far as the AFS position, Vice Wendy, uh, we're going to do a 120-day detail with, with Wendy will coordinate with interested hydrologists across the region, but we hope to get a 120-day detail. We can't fill our position now because we don't have the PCS on AFS, but we will get someone to detail in there. So we are trying to find creative ways to get relief for her. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, uh, on, the open forum, on the open forum, I wanted to address the question from Riverton. Unfortunately, Bill Gary and Matt Foster <clears throat> are tied up with the visitors, but um, we um, we decided not to do a free for all with the West Two Bridge installs. Um, so we're going to put out a tech note that helps um, you know, helps tracking the install of the West Two Bridge. So um, the, the the answer to the question, I can't get a I can't get you Brett a technical answer, but there is a, a plan to have a tech note to install the West Two Bridge which is a slightly different time scale than what's on the WDTB page as far as a timeline to install. According to that timeline, half of you would have already installed your West 2 bridge. So um, there should be a tech note also uh, for the, uh, the uh, five terabyte drive. So when you say, WT, I, when I saw W2B kit, 
I'm assuming you mean you mean West Two Bridge and not the five terabyte drive. He's probably muted. Yes, um, I, I but don't. Anyways, I there will be a, there, Go ahead. there will be a tech note for the West Two Bridge. Okay, and uh, Dan Baumgart, you had a question. So, what's the I guess what's the timeline on the on the West Two Bridge, Jeff? And and what's the beta? Is there an update on like what the beta sites have found? Is it how stable is it? Um, you know, moving forward, do we envision most sites will have a stable version by spring for convective season? Well, the idea is that. You should be able to install it right now. Uh, we figured that it would be a little bit chaotic to just have a free-for-all, so we thought the tech note with the idea that it would be probably installed sometime in January with, you know, with the holidays, it's just it, you've already completed your winter training and we figured but, I mean, if, if, if someone wants to try to install it ahead of time, there's actually a link to all the information on WDTB's site. It's just that we we didn't really like the way that they rolled it out without a tech note. So Central Region thought that it should be a tech note. So the timing would be we would want you to have it installed in January for the reasons you stated. Does that, would that be acceptable? I guess if you're asking me, I guess I'm, I just have no feel for how stable that software is right now and how mature or immature it is. I, I mean, I've seen some traffic from billings that it's not yeah, the most robust, and I, I'm just kind of curious about the overall feel of that. Well, um, my understanding from what billings has shown is that they, their feedback has fallen on deaf ears. And All right. So the, to answer your question, a West 2 bridge will be available. Whether it's stable enough for your liking is very difficult for me to, to predict. Well, it's uh, not for my liking. It's just that I can do it, you know, run a successful West simulation on a box that mimics our operational system and I can look at my, you know, three terabytes of archive data that I haven't looked at for two years now. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing I want to I want to do. So I guess I'm just kind of curious if, if we'll end up all waiting for the, you know, for the betterment of the software or, you know, how many resources, is it still a resource issue there in WDTB? Are we throwing more resources to move this along? It's just, it's just growing frustration out here, you know. My, co my my forecasters basically laugh that we're still doing A1 type things. It's just we we prioritize it nationally. It's in a directive that we have to do it twice a year, and we're just not putting any resources into it. Um, not enough, in my opinion. And so, you know, we hey, need uh, to move this forward. Dan and uh, Dan and Jeff, this is Eric. Where we uh, you know Chicago did the beta test for Central Region. And we were, you know, sharing results back and forth with Billings and the training division. And, you know, our impression was overall favorable. Actually, I was a little surprised. You know, it's pretty slick, actually, the, the West 2 bridge. And we were able to go through all of their test cases that they sent us. We were able to take uh, local archive and get it running on there. Um, I personally still need to learn a little bit more about it because we had several people in our office including our ITO and some of our lead forecasters working on this together. But uh, we also went through a hydro simulation that they had on there, and that was that was really excellent. So, I mean, my impression is, is positive, and I think once we once we get it deployed, I, you know, I, I'm sure there's going to be glitches and bugs and stuff, but, um, you know, I mean, you probably recall from the national Sioux meeting kind of the attitude billings had going into it, and 
Uh, in my mind, it was better than I had probably expected it to be and, and it functioned more smoothly than I had maybe expected. But once we get it deployed, we'll start to, uh, we'll start to learn more. But in, in general, I think uh, you're going to like it. Hey, this is Daniel in Omaha. Just FYI, I don't believe it contains GSE or AVN FPS initially, so uh, we'll have to wait for that for another build. Uh, John out, uh, John uh, out at uh, North Platte. You had, a, I think, you had some information too. Yeah, I was just going to say we already installed it based on the information that we got from Dale Morris, and I guess I didn't really think that. Um, again, I thought this was all coordinated, but apparently it wasn't. Um, we did find several gotchas in the installation. Uh, um, our ESA actually in installed most of the hardware and set it up in the software and that. And so initially we did find some gotchas that uh, he sent back to Dale, and they were appreciative of that. I have not had a chance yet to, to set up test cases or any of that yet. And again, here, here's the, the fun part about trying to manage this process is WDTB released all this information, but there were we were aware of some gotchas. We Bill Gary is working on a tech note, and because it's the holidays, we figured, you know, rather than just having a free for all with all these gotchas that we would try to release something where we'd minimize some of, the, of these issues. And I mean, I can send out the West 2 Bridge training link, and you can go out there and, as per you know, the email, you can install it if you want. But we thought that it would be better to have something coordinated and released such that you could do it in January and have a little bit less frustration. But you know, we certainly we're not going to prevent anyone from doing it, but we wanted to also track that the installs were actually done. So if you guys have a better idea, I mean, I'm all, I'm open to this. I'm not trying to, I'm not someone that likes to withhold information, but I didn't go out of my way to advertise this until we were ready. Uh, there was a question um, for Eric uh, from Mike Fowl. Can you do anything uh, with GFE, Eric Lenning. What uh, I didn't hear the end of that. Okay, can you do anything with GFE uh, with uh, West Two? Uh, we were primarily looking at the um, the radar and the uh, basically the D2D capabilities. That was our focus. So we haven't gone into that side of the things yet. You know our. Uh, I don't know, this, this is kind of our local perspective, but, you know, I mean, the GFE kind of stuff for us is, that's not really our big focus on the West. So, I mean, that's maybe why I don't have a better answer for you there. Okay, thanks, Eric. Okay, if we have... Uh, if we don't have any more questions on West 2, uh, stepping back for a moment, uh, Aaron Johnson, uh, I think you had a question. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Sure can. Go ahead. Okay, well, not, not to add any more fuel to the uh, frustration discontent of West 2, but uh, uh, yesterday I got an email, and, and several Sioux in Central Region got this, but uh, I got an email from Dale Moore saying that, unaware of what bill did this, but apparently the retention time period in the uh, retention GUI was eliminated from seven days down to one hour. Of course, I was sent this yesterday, a day after I had a fairly significant tornado outbreak, and I cannot go back and grab that data. This is kind of just a, an FYI, but Everybody should probably go in once they have their their archiver set up and check that thing frequently. I mean, I honestly did not even think that was something that was a possibility. And then obviously got the, the message after the fact, and I, I can't go back and grab it. But uh, be very aware that occasionally this is occurring. Uh, Dale was unaware of when. Uh, but 
several sites were impacted by this to where you would assume you had your full seven days of archive and all of a sudden you go in there and you find you no know, it was eliminating data every hour and that is terribly frustrating for me especially going after a, a late season tornado event that I'd love to play back in the future but you know now I've got to go grab kind of piecemeal everything together from various sources and that's to me kind of defeats the purpose of some of this archiving process and if it's a black box and even understanding what's causing these flags to change it's, it's frustrating so I just, just wanted to add that real quick because most of you didn't uh, get that email. Okay. And I think um, uh, Aaron Matt Bunkers had a comment that, that was a casualty of 1511. Uh, other questions? Uh, Mark Singer has been chatting with me and he says River Pro doesn't work, uh, FSI doesn't work, and GFE doesn't work. Uh, I know I use GFE heavily in my case studies when I was at Milwaukee, so that would be a, a, a big detractor for me. Um, yeah, this is Dan in Lacrosse. Uh, Dale Morris came to me and asked if we could help figure out how to get GFE to work in this software, which tells me that there's, he, he said quite, quite honestly that there's no GFE knowledge there to help get GFE fielded for Quest 2 Bridge, which, you know, just goes to my previous point that it's we're just not putting the resources towards that program. we got to do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so in the background, uh, I, and I, I hear the frustration that, that we pass along frequently to the chief learning officer. Um, Here's the reality. They want to put no resources into the West 2 bridge because they want to put all the resources into an embedded simulation process in AWIPS where you flip a switch and you're in simulation mode and there's an archive of numerous IDSS rich simulations for the whole office, not just for one workstation. So generally when the SSD chiefs pass along this unacceptable, I mean I've written notes about how unacceptable all of this is. I've bitched to Ming Ji and John Ogren and anyone who'll listen and so did every other SSD chief for the last year. Um, we get lots of runaround because they feel that they can't make this system good enough and they're afraid to put resources towards it. And we say, well, what do we do in the meantime? Um, so Aaron, let me get this straight. You, you're saying that one of the AWIPS builds randomly switch, turned the switch on a day seven archiver to one hour? Yes, I believe so. Uh, sounds like it was fifteen one one. Yeah, there's a config file in there, and if you don't, every build, if you don't go in there and make sure that your code at your site level is consistent with that base file, your site will overwrite it, and it and it can just all of a sudden just stop archiving a lot of different things without you knowing it, just as an upgrade. I'm not even sure how to respond with the expletives to that. Well, they, yeah, so they I mean, changed I mean, the I mean, I, I, I mean it, it's, it's beyond moronic is really kind of the way I look at it. Um, why would anyone default a code to one hour? But this is the kind of stuff that Greg Noonan and Matt Foster and Bill Geary spend lots of time unearthing and trying to fix and throw their body in front of but we can't catch everything and we apologize but it's if there's so many hours wasted with them yeah. trying to and that's why with the west two bridge and as, as john and north flat you know we're trying to find fixes to all these gotchas so that you guys in the field don't have to you know, say this wasn't ready for prime time 
Well, we understand. Um, <coughs> but th thanks, Aaron, for bringing that up. Uh, I, I really don't know what to say. Well, I mean, not the greatest situation, but I just wanted to bring it to everybody else. Hey, Jeff, this is John. Um, I, I appreciate that you guys are looking at that. I just, we didn't know that, so yeah, we I, thinking we should have. Yeah, and again, what, hap what happened is uh, WDTB just sends this stuff out without coordinating it, and they actually had an install list, and they had every office in Central Region on a specific date that you're supposed to install. And that's why I didn't want to send the link out because it doesn't match up to what. Um, but I'm going to send out the email now and just say, you may wish to wait, but I don't, I don't want to stop people from installing if they want to. But just understand if you come to us for uh, support on all the bugs, I mean, that's kind of why I didn't release it. So, I mean, these are the kind of decisions I've got to make. It sounds like we're stalling. It sounds like we're clowns, and maybe we are. But these are the kind of things that I have to try to decide every day whether or not we should tell you about it, and then have a free for all when it's not ready. That that's that's and it's not easy. It's really not. But I'm going to send this out to, to let you know that there you could go out and do it if you wanted to, but there will be a tech note. Hey Jeff, this is Pat. Yes. Um, who is in charge of letting us know when there's rather significant changes to uh, AWIT's builds? Greg? Be in the living release notes. Okay. Um, well, what I'm bringing that up for is uh, we did a, a backup last week, and we're doing one today. The backup week changed completely from what we had, and you know we managed through it. And you know it's it's not too difficult, but if if a forecaster had to do that on the fly, and we didn't know that the backup GUI changed completely, um, I think it could could have become an issue. And I don't remember seeing anything about it. Maybe it was in a note somewhere buried in an email. But, uh, you know, we're used to getting good training from WDTD on radar changes. It seems like we get an AWIPS build and you're on your own. Well... Again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be professional in my response here, so <laughs> I, I'm not going. To, I'm not going to answer your question directly. Um, when I found out that the National Blend wouldn't be in AWIP 16.1.1 when the director of the Weather Service has been pushing many people on the team to get this out as soon as possible, you might imagine our reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that I one thing that on the NSEP review, we go to the NSEP review each year, and I've requested that AWIPS personnel attend that meeting because it seems like whenever we get ready to run a model or do some change, it never gets to the field because someone in AWIPS didn't realize it was coming. There are definitely some challenges in managing the AWIPS program. And I know that would offend people in the AWIPS program. Um, we, we, uh, I have written numerous notes to Ed Mandel and Ron LaHenry, uh, giving them feedback about our frustrations. Um, I would be tempted to get a Google Doc out and perhaps have some of you give me some material that I could take two weeks from now to bring up some of these frustrations and a need to better 
collaborate and coordinate changes and communicate those changes. Um, would, would it be helpful for Greg to let you know when there was a living release notes that came out that you might want to read? I mean, what, what can we do here at Central Region SSD to help with that? I mean, I, I'm all ears. Well, I guess, you know, living release notes would be good in that I would know that I need to look at them. Um, in the long run, though, it, it seems to me we need somebody like, and not necessarily, but somebody like WDTD to keep up with some of the major changes. I mean, um, those those short videos that Jamie puts out are, are well received and, and okay, it's here, it's done, that's what's, these are the big changes. Other stuff you don't need to worry about. On a positive note, Dave Myrick just chatted me and says, we fixed the POPs in the, N the NBM, there is a God. So that, I thought that was after hearing what Dan Nittfeld said earlier, we got POPs better, now now we have to work on CPF. <clears throat> so it's now 1123. Um, is there, is there any more good news we want to discuss? And I, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. I, I, you guys are welcome to let me know what you're frustrated about. My job is to take your frustrations and elevate them. Um, the AWIPS 2 issues and the West 2 bridge issues have been elevated ad nauseum. Um, I am now in the process of gradually briefing Chris Strager on these challenges so that he can attack the SESers and say, you know, this is not acceptable. So I do have a plan. Um, I can tell you that Chris, even as an SESer, will complain and often he is given the hand, you know, talk to the hand. So it doesn't always work. Anyhow, uh, any other comments or questions? Anyone enjoying that phone that's ringing now that we have? <clears throat> Somebody answered the phone. Hello? Hello? Yeah, Greg Noonan just sent out those living release nodes, and those are about as cryptic as it gets. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, if someone can make sense of those, if Greg could do it, uh, make make sense of a summary of the build coming out, or Matt Foster, and make a summary of the informational bullets that affect us operationally. Maybe that would be helpful. Yeah. I don't let, know. Why don't we? Why don't we talk, yeah. Why don't we talk about that here, uh, Jeff, and see where we can put it, and everybody knows where to go every time with something that makes. Yeah, sense. we could. We could. Put we could potentially um, we could potentially ask we could go back to WDTB or the AWIP whoever writes the living release notes to maybe to do an executive summary page would that work? Well, we'll talk anything right now. <laughs> SOS. That's very good. So anyways, um, I think we should wrap this up. It's been a good call. There's going to be an MIC call. Um, Chris Strager is going to talk about some of his plans for staffing. So I didn't want to, uh, and, and then outside of STI, he's going to kind of list his priorities based on what monies we have. So it's, it should be a pretty good talk if you, you guys have time for it. Uh, we, we've really done some analysis on the offices that are really short-handed and try to, um, you know, try to help them out as much as possible given our workforce management. So if you think, if you think uh, AWIPS and West 2 Bridge is fun, you should talk, sit around and talk about fixing workforce management. That's, that, that's lots of fun too. Um, 
I, I appreciate you guys being open and transparent about your frustrations. Please never hesitate to, to do that. Uh, I'll listen and I will push information up. I always do. Uh, but a lot of times we get happy talk and we don't get results. Okay? Uh, and I do apologize for that. Um, we will keep at it until they <laughs> fix problems. We will continue to remind them that the problem isn't fixed. We should try to bring solutions, though, when we do. So uh, they think they have a solution with embedding AWIPS uh, simulations in AWIPS, and so they say, "Well, once we get that out there." So a lot of times you get this, well, I, I've got a plan, and so they check a box, and then in the meantime, in the short term, we're left hanging. So we will try to support. Yeah. I agree. I, I'm happy to hear from Billings, and also, I'm happy, Eric, I'm happy to hear that you're doing better at Chicago with the West 2 Bridge. Um, it's not perfect, but it does seem like you can do simulations, and so we're, we're hoping this will get you through the spring severe weather training season. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving next week and uh, thanks for attending.